it's so important that you are all here because four years four long painful years what an awful milestone i mean i think about all of the things that have happened in my life in four years i think about all of the things that have happened in the world in four years and then i think about the innocent men on manus the children and the families on Nauru, they have spent every minute of every hour of every one of those days trapped behind the same fence. And in that time, people have been shot at, people have been sexually assaulted. So we're here tonight to remember we're here to remember the people who have needlessly died at our government's hands. And we are here to demand a future for those who are still left on Nauru and Manus. Australia has some of the harshest refugee policies when, when it relates to people seeking asylum on our shores, particularly those who arrive by boat a policy of deterrence, which means that people who have arrived in Australia by boat are used as examples and treated extremely harshly in order to dissuade others from taking the same journey. We have a policy which has consigned you know, 2,000 people to endless limbo in, in remote islands. What our government does is holds them there for an indefinite period of time and they do that with old people, they do that with people with disabilities, they do that with babies, they do it with everybody. But the reality is, is that if you let xenophobia and fear triumph, and you start to say, well, we are allowed to do certain things to this group of people that we would not think of doing to our own people, then that's a really dark pathway. It was only last year a UN delegation of mental health experts found that the highest levels of anxiety and depressive orders ever recorded in a, in a group of people and the sense of hopelessness continues and it's only through the tireless um, powerful advocacy of people like Daniel that uh, these people have hope. There was a number of people who had been brought to Australia for medical treatment um, and as they were concluding their medical treatment, the Australian Border Force and Serco Immigration Services were forcibly um, putting people on planes and taking them back to the camps on Nauru and Manus. What happened at that moment is that Daniel and his team just didn't give up. So the Human Rights Law Centre went, OK, so we've been done on a legal technicality, but we're not going to stop there. And then they brought in Get Up, which is a national campaigning team, and put together the Let Them Stay campaign. It is fundamentally wrong to condemn these people to a life in limbo on a tiny island. Daniel um, called me because he said, I have 267 clients who are relying on this case, protecting them from being sent back to certain abuse in Manus and Nauru in the offshore centres. And he said, I think the legal grounds could be exhausted and I want to run a campaign. And it got massive support. Every single state premier supported what was called Let Them Stay. And before we knew it, we had swung public opinion in such a way that all of these people who we thought after the case would be immediately sent back offshore in a forcible and horrific way were suddenly being released into the community with their children. And a year and a half later, we have more than 300 people who are still in Australia living in the community, not in Manus and Nauru, because of that campaign. Daniel's work has really been important in advancing pluralism uh, by getting across to the mainstream population that these people, they've suffered enormously. They share our dreams, they share our hopes. They crave the opportunity to contribute, to engage and to, to enrich our society. This 
removing of the notion of difference and of the focus of, oh, this is a person seeking asylum. It was like, well, no, these are just people and they should be protected just like anybody else. The subject matter of his work is at the centre of global pluralism at this point in time in the global debate. The work he's doing is internationally significant and precedent setting um, in terms of a defence to the forces that are encouraging us globally to withdraw from a plural society and withdraw from welcome and withdraw from rights obligations. And for many of these people there's a sense to which the world has forgotten them. So this award for Daniel not only recognises his work, but I think acknowledges their plight. And I think it's immensely significant for them. The best possible outcome is that the offshore processing system that we have in place now um, comes to an end um, and that everybody who's been affected by that policy um, is settled in safety and are able to rebuild their lives. At the heart of pluralism is valuing and respecting difference, recognising that all people, whoever they are and whatever they do and wherever they come from, deserve basic decency and respect. Because if every country in the world just adopted a single-minded focus on frightening people away, where would the world's refugees go?